weather forecasting starts with observations. And we have these um, stations around the country. We have 25 weather observing stations in the Republic of Ireland. There's obviously some more in Northern Ireland and scattering them through Britain as well. But every hour we plot the forecast, the, the observations here, and we look at these and see, you know, where is the temperature falling, where is the pressure rising, where is the wind strongest and so on. So that gives us a look at exactly what's happening on a kind of an up to the minute. You put it together, of course, with the satellite and the radar information to get that image or view, if you like, of what the weather is doing over Ireland at the moment. Of course, we have all this information and more on computers, and we have excellent graphic systems for analysing and uh, examining that data. So when we come to looking ahead now, virtually all of our forecasts are based around, beyond at least a few hours or a day, are based around computer models. These are mathematical simulations of the atmosphere that run on the computers. They're very complicated things and they give us a lot of guidance as to how the weather is evolving over the next week or so. And they really form the core of, of how we forecast the weather in that period. This desk is 24-7 uh, operated, so there's always a forecaster here, morning, noon, night, evenings, weekends, Christmas Day, there'll be a forecaster here sitting, watching, because it's important that we have this 24-hour, seven-day week, 365 day of the year, weather watch over Ireland. That's our job, to keep a watch and to issue forecasts and warnings as, mm. as required. So here this graphic system is that very sophisticated system which I mentioned, which is taking all the data from the models, all the satellite, the radar, the observation data, and overlay it and allow the forecaster to examine it and see how things are moving in time and how things stack up in, in space. And then these other computers where we actually prepare the forecast, type out the texts or uh, prepare the graphics or whatever and look at other types of information which we have available and that, that are effectively available through web types or sources. vast improvements in the science and technology underlying weather in my working lifetime, which is nearly four decades now. So Hurricane Charlie was in 1986. Everybody now looks at the weather radar if they want to plan a day out or if they're cycling somewhere or if they're having a picnic or going to play a game of golf, or farming, whatever. We didn't have weather radar in 1986. We did not actually know where that rain was falling until we saw reports coming in from stations. The weather models that we were using were very coarse and could give us only a very vague estimation of the likelihood of heavy rain in different parts of the country. Now we have them much more refined, much more detailed, much more localised. So all of that science has improved hugely. So if Hurricane Charlie were to happen again, we would hope to be able to give three or four days notice of not just the amount of rain, but those places where the rain was likely to fall and the, the impact.